The following is a completely fan made Dragon Ball project produced by R. Jackson 22 and presented by Call Me Arj. This is part 1. In the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, we will see Bardock, the father of Goku, the man who resembles our hero in every way and who he inevitably inherited all of his heroic character from. From the scenes of Bardock challenging Frieza and his men all by himself, to turning into the legendary Super Saiyan in the past while defending the weak against Frieza's ancestors, Bardock has become a cult symbol within the Dragon Ball community as a symbol of power and strength. Ironically, not through his own power per se, but by his actions alone. But they say, behind every great man lies a greater woman. And in this case, it is his other half, Jine, the mother of Goku. The woman never once mentioned in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Super GT or any film only ever seen in the fated manga, DB-. The woman who had given birth to the greatest hero of our time, the saviour of countless planets and lives, and the very woman who even chose to bring Goku to Earth, thus beginning the entire Dragon Ball series as we knew it, has never been given the limelight, until now. In the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie trailer, in the same scene we see Bardock, we now know we will also see Jine, both of them saying goodbye for the last time to their baby boy as they lay behind unknowingly to die by the hands of Frieza. This of course will all be in a flashback, and though Goku may somehow be triggered into remembering his mother and father momentarily in this film as a possible plot piece, there will be no meeting of Jine and Goku in the present. She is dead, and he is not. But there was a time when they were both deceased. A time when poignantly, both Goku and Raditz his only brother died in each other's arms simultaneously, both sent to the other world together. This is where our story takes place. Goku and Raditz both arrive after their death, their bodies intact in the other world, in a strange area before they receive the judgement of King Yemma. But on arrival, they are immediately attacked or at least slapped, Raditz first and then Goku second. Goku looks stunned having never actually been hurt by a woman's slap, much less one from one he doesn't even know. He stares as the woman angrily stares back at him, and curiously, she's in the same kind of armour Raditz is in. Could she be a Saiyan too, he wonders to himself. Before he can think too long however, Jine interrupts him, yelling at them with tears in her eyes. You guys are idiots. Your brothers and you are supposed to stay alive. We sacrificed so much for you. With her of course referencing the very last line, Bardock left for Goku for him to survive no matter what. Raditz looks on with a self sombering look and a drop of sweat coming down his face as he can't even bear to even look at his crying mother in the face after failing her so miserably. Goku however remains completely perplexed, still not knowing who this woman is or why she is getting so emotional over his death. Jine quiets down and succumbs to her sadness, trying to wipe away her tears, saying, you, you fools. Raditz, feeling bad now comforts her saying, I'm sorry mum, unleashing the bombshell to Goku. Carrying on, I didn't want it to end this way, I had no intention of killing Kakarot, I just wanted him to join us. Which to a large extent was actually true, that was ultimately Raditz's goal and taking Gohan away with him could have arguably just been a way of forcing Goku's hand, but ultimately that's not how things ended. 
Goku by now is so alarmed by the word mom, and though he's not the sharpest tool in the box, has now begun to clock onto who this woman may actually be. Jine looks at Raditz with her happy face, finally, as if she could never be mad at her eldest child, and says, I know son, you behave just like a big brother, right? Raditz responds a little lost for words after witnessing her sudden change in tone and reminiscing of his not so brotherly methods of achieving his goals. Jine continues, it's amazing how much you've grown. The last time I saw you, you were so tiny. Now look at you, you have such long hair. With again Raditz being shocked at being touched by his mother, who he realizes he hasn't actually seen since he was a child last seen just before he was sent off from planet Vegeta to be in the young Vegeta's team as he gained in strength concrete planets. Eventually Jine turns to her youngest son, Kakarot as she knows him. She immediately grabs him, the boy who she sent off at the age of just three who she had almost no time with, explaining the story of how and why Bardock wanted him to escape Vegeta and how it was actually her who programmed the space pod to reach Earth due to its low level species. She tells Goku, we sent you to Earth when you were still a baby so you wouldn't remember me. You are identical to your father, echoing the same words she said back in DB- when Bardock arrived on the orders of Frieza and continues You've become as strong as him too, shedding some light on the kind of power level Bardock may have had back in that time. Her eyes begin to close and a bright smile comes across her face as she finally says, but what pleases me the most is that I see you have become a good and kind person. I'm proud of you Kakarot. Goku who had never had any kind of parental figure in his life other than Grandpa Gohan and who definitely had never had a womanly figure to look up to, just nonchalantly laughs quietly and says thanks, smiling back at Jine, finally realising this woman is his mother. Raditz and Goku continue to catch up with their mother and not far away listening in with a small smirk, we see Bardock arms crossed and effortlessly cool as he awaits his turn to finally reunite with his two sons. But yeah guys that was it for part 1 of this what if scenario and there are a lot more coming. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments what you thought and how excited you are to see Jine in the movie. Will she finally get some much needed attention and shine in the movie? let me know but there's also bonus video here today as well again and that is a look at the new promotional images released for the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. We've got images of Base, Vegeta and Goku standing next to their sons Trunks and Goten along with Piccolo and Bulma and them titties. Unclear who the artist is behind these but this is definitely out of proportion as Vegeta is much much shorter than Goku as we know but that's a little point. We also have an image here of Broly and Frieza, that Broly image is recycled for sure, I've seen it many many times before, but that Frieza image is brand new and I've not seen it anywhere else. And then we have of course posters as well, a poster of Vegeta in that same new pose with Trunks. Now I wonder if the father son relationship and dynamic here will play any role in this film considering I'm sure the relationship between King Vegeta and Vegeta and Bardock and Goku and of course Broly and Paragus will all be explored meaning it could be a pretty cool comparison to see the father saints of the new generation and lo and behold in the same vein we then see Goku and Goten again foreshadowing that this may be a pivotal story piece in relation to the past fathers of planet Vegeta. But yeah, that's my guess for now. Let me know what you think and don't forget to smash that subscribe button to be entered into our monthly console giveaways. One click and you're in for life, so get that done now. Until next video guys, cheers.